17 of the ELO and Stitch podcast. I am your host, Kristen, and I am here to talk to you about knitting. What else? Uh, I'll also be talking about other goings on in the fiber arts community, uh, knitting pattern design, life in general, and of course, there's always a good chance that it's somewhere along the way I'm going to mention Diego Luna. Um, so thank you so much again for joining me and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons who help keep the podcast up and running and a special welcome to any new viewers who are checking out the podcast for the first time. So if you don't already know me, my name is Kristen Janik. I'm a knitting pattern designer and knitting instructor. Um, I am also mom to two very mischievous little boys and wife to a very tall man from Peru. We live in the Maryland suburbs of Washington, D.C. Uh, and if I'm not knitting, I'm usually watching baseball, working in my vegetable garden, maybe doing some yoga. That's mostly knitting. So let's start talking about it. All right, guys, the world is, is like on fire. So <laughs> um, I was sort of dithering about whether or not I wanted to do a podcast because it seems a little bit frivolous with everything that's going on. But at the same time, I think we could all use a little bit of frivolity. Ah, so here we are. Um, I hope you are watching this from the safety and comfort of your home where you are staying to help, as they say, flatten the curve um, and prevent the spread of COVID-19. We are home. Uh, we have been home for over a week now, more or less. Um, the kids are out of school. And so in just a matter of days, uh, I went from having two kids in school, one of them part-time, uh, running my, my business in my off mom hours to having both kids at, at home full-time and having to teach them. That was a big change. Um, my husband is also home. He is working from home, which I think, frankly, is a positive for him because he no longer has an hour, hour and a half commute each way. Uh, and he gets to wear jeans. <laughs> um, we do not have like a study or office space. Um, I really want to put kind of a study library into, I guess, what is probably the formal living room for our house that we've never used um, as really anything. It's just like an empty space. Um, and it has always been my goal to put kind of like a study library office space in there. Um, but we don't at this time have the money to furnish it. So uh, he is stuck working in the dining room. Uh, which you know we use when we have large uh, dinners with family, but we're obviously not having any of those. Um, but after a couple of days of me trying to do full-time mom slash homeschool teacher and losing all of my work hours in the day, um, I sort of dragged him to the epiphany that this was not going to work because... He was still, you know, earning a steady paycheck, working from home, but didn't have to commute and got to be comfortable. And I was suddenly uh, sort of flailing business-wise because I was losing so many hours. And I suddenly had to handle not only the children being home, but teaching them. Um, so we worked at a schedule where I get a little break in the morning and again in the afternoon where he... Can sort of be on call for work uh, if anything urgent comes up but he can play with the kids for an hour or so and i can get a little bit of work done at least so that is what is happening now and as far as school goes i am doing uh, an hour of school in the morning and an hour in the afternoon um so in the morning we do reading and writing and met and social studies and in the afternoon uh, math and science. What the school has sent right now is just review because it's, an, it's considered an emergency shutdown. Um, so teachers aren't uh, actively working or, or, you know, preparing lessons or things like that. Um, so that technically is two weeks. 
it seems like it's going to be longer. And once that happens, they are going to do some more distance learning and so the kids don't actually fall behind. Um, but the review stuff, my kids are mostly bored with it. So I've kind of been winging it a little bit. Um, it's a little tricky because I've got one in pre-K. You know, he's not, you know, I mean, there's not, he's not learning a lot of stuff in pre-K. It's more about learning to function in a classroom and learning to follow directions and, you know, interact with other kids. Um, and so that's, of course, something I can't, <laughs> I can't help him with. You know, while we're all isolated. Um, although we have been, we've been working on some, working on his writing and uh, it's hard, you know, since he is mostly nonverbal, it's hard. He can read, you know, but he can't, like reading out loud is not, doesn't work that well for him. Um, so we've been doing, you know, sort of basic stuff, counting and things like that with him. And then, um, JJ, he's a very smart kid. Um, so he was already before school stopped telling me that he was bored in math. Um, it was all repetitive and he didn't like it. So I've been kind of been plunging ahead with him, you know, still doing reading, reading comprehension and writing and all that, but um, moving a little bit forward in math and doing um, multiplication tables. Um, school really didn't send anything for science or social studies. So I've been using some online resources, um, Brain Pop Junior, uh, Pebble Go, uh, the Scholastic website has um, some stuff for kids where they've got like a read along and watch along kind of thing um, that combines like a, an animated story with um, an informational book that you read. So. And I got them in a science experiments book, which they always enjoy. <laughs> the more potential for mess, the better. So we are just plugging away at that. Um, we have mostly been staying home. Other than the grocery store, we have gone out twice. Uh, the first time was that um, we had been trying to get an appointment at one of the autism uh, centers that are nearby and there are two in Maryland. One is uh, Children's National and the other one is Kennedy Krieger Institute. Um, and for both, you generally have speaking have to wait a year to get an appointment. Um, but with everything that's going on, they had a cancellation and we were able to get an appointment at Kennedy Krieger last, was it Friday? I can't, I can't even remember. No, it was last Wednesday uh, for JJ. So I went up there and did his evaluation um, and they did give a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. He said he's very high functioning. Um, you know, his issues are primarily going to be uh, socialization, which we already knew, um, and anxiety, which is not really a surprise. He's always been the child that, what if, what if, what if? and overreacting to everything. So uh, their recommendation is to get him involved in some social skills groups. Of course, we cannot do that right now. So <laughs> that's just kind of on hold. And then they want to do um, a neuropsychological evaluation, which is, I guess, what we used to think of as an IQ test to see where his strengths and weaknesses are. He may have some, um, you know, academic areas where he is, I guess what they would, they would say gifted. And then maybe he needs, um, you know, to move a little bit faster than his classmates in those areas and, and we'll deal with that. Um, but again, that appointment is probably gonna take a year and obviously can't happen until things are not on lockdown. Uh, and then the only other place I have been is that Friday I went and got my hair colored, um, which was supposed to happen the, the previous weekend, um, but I woke up uh, at 2 a.m puking and was up for like three hours um, and I was supposed to have an appointment the next day to have my hair colored. Um, so I had to miss that. She was very kind to reschedule it before everything went into complete lockdown. Um, so I went, I, I walked in and the, the salon was basically empty. Just a few employees were there, no other customers and it smelled like a pool. They had been cleaning and disinfecting so much. Um, but it was, 
mostly uh, sitting there by myself waiting for my you know dye to set and uh, minimum minimal interaction with anybody else so other than my colors that was it uh, and that is it we have been at home um, trying to keep the kids busy we do live in a suburban area so we are able to go for walks when the weather is good uh, unfortunately this time of year it tends to be really rainy um, so that is you know we have been having some on and off warm days, which is nice, but we've also been having a lot of rain. So, and we do have a backyard the kids can play in. Other than that, you know, we did a little FaceTime with family, but we are closed up and in the house like we're supposed to be. Uh, and I hope you are as well. And now let's start talking about something a little more cheerful. Meeting. All right, for Adelante, this episode, um, we are home, so it seems like I should have more knitting time, but again, the kids are here, and we had some uh, back and forth trying to work out a, a schedule where I could still have some work time, so um, I'm not really behind on anything, but I'm, I feel like I could be doing more, but um, so I, I am working on, on several things, so uh, the biggest one is this monstrosity. This is the hairspray and radio shawl slash schlanket. Slash schlanket. That's cute. Um, slash schlanket, which um, if you're not aware, is a combination of shawl and blanket. So this is... A great big cozy worsted weight shawl um, that I am hoping to publish at the very end of the month but as you can see it is it's not done um, I, I still think I can make it happen I know we're really close um, I remember when you're watching this that I actually recorded this several days earlier um, so um, I have finished one side and so what this is is you start by knitting this cable column and you knit that with just um, the worsted weight yarn which is uh, Neighborhood Fiber Company Studio Worsted <laughs> mohair um, and then along one side of the column you pick up stitches for one wing of the shawl and then you start holding double with the mohair uh, which is uh, neighborhood fiber company loft in the color the, the worst weight the color is shadow and the mohair the color is broadway market um and so then it moves into this slip stitch pattern here you can see how nice and fuzzy that is and you can see it's a little wrinkled at the top, but that's gonna, when I stretch it out blocking, that's what I, that's gonna get fixed. Uh, and then we have some very, very squishy, squishy, squishy fisherman's rib. And this is another, this is nice and stretchy. So this is gonna block out even bigger. And then I drop the mohair and just knit the last bit in a twisted rib. We got nice, lots of stretch here. Um, and then at the end, I'm probably going to put tassels on the three corners. So I finished the one side. Um, I have started the second side. And this is a nice, easy knit. So the slip, the this part, the slip stitch, this is very easy. And it's, it's easy to memorize. Um, and then the fisherman's rib, once you get the hang of it again. Um, easy to memorize. You know, you're, you're just decreasing along one edge to make that triangle shape. So it's a good project to memorize and, you know, something you can work on if you are at home with your kids trying to deal with them and you need something that's a bit of mindless knitting. This is going to be great for that. Um, I think it is going to end up using um, the two full skeins of Studio Worsted. That's about 800 yards of worsted weight. And of course the mohair is optional. If you have it, great. If not, you can still do it without. Um, you can just see like the slight, get out of here, the slight color variation between where I've got the mohair and where I don't. So this just kind of looks 
brighter. And this has, an, because the mohair obviously is blue, it has an overall kind of blue hint to it on this part. Uh, so that is going to be my next pattern release, and I, I really am hoping to have this out at the very, very end of March. Um, this is really warm. This is so nice. I mean, it's not freezing today, but it's probably in the 40s right now. I don't have the weather up. Um, this just is so cozy. I love it. And it seems a bit of an odd time of the year for something heavy and, and cozy, but um, you know, nights are still cold, and then soon it will be um, air conditioning season. So, and then the, the idea with the schlanket is that you can, you can wear it as a shawl, but you can also have it as like a lap blanket. So that is the next thing that is coming up. And then I mentioned last time the project I'm super excited about, my collaboration with Fiber for the People. So that is underway. I did have one false start because I still am not very good at adding and subtracting. But um, you can see here, so the bottom trim is worked in just the fingering weight yarn. And then this part is being worked with a fingering weight and a mohair held double, giving it this really nice marled, muted watercolor kind of tone. I really love this. Um, so this is going to be a sleeveless top. Um, initially I had planned to release this in late April. I don't know if I'm still going to be able to do it that soon. Um, but at the latest it would be early May. Uh, I really am hoping for late April, but, uh, there's obviously still quite a lot of work to be done. Uh, and I'm going to get some testers involved. Um, so I'm really loving how this is looking so far. Um, and this is going to be the next um, design that I'm gonna be highlighting in my Knitting Design Studio blog series. So if you're not familiar with that, those are smaller 10 to 15 minute vlogs, uh, really going behind the scenes into the nitty gritty of the knit design process. Um, so the last series I did was on Umo Margo, and now I'm gonna be doing um, this one. And this top is going to be called um, Painted on the Sky. So again, it's a sleeveless top with a front pleat, um, worked in fingering weight and mohair in absolutely beautiful yarn from Fiber for the People. So that is underway. Um, and hopefully I'll start making faster progress on that in the near future. And then I sort of accidentally cast off <laughs> on a new project. Um, I was just thinking about the kinds of projects that maybe people would want to be working on right now. Um, and I, you know, I really don't know something quick. Um, you know, if you want to be supporting small business, maybe you're buying a couple of skeins. You know, there have been a lot of um, fiber events that are that have gone kind of virtual and have done virtual versions of their events. Um, this past weekend was Homespun Yarn Party which uh, is a Maryland-based event, and they did virtual. So maybe, you, you know, you don't have a ton of extra cash, but you bought a skein of yarn from, you know, one of these dyers at one of these events, and you need a small project. So I was kind of thinking about that, and then I was also thinking about um, something that would sort of go along with the whole... Um, stay home, don't touch your face, wash your hands, everything that's going on. And I thought maybe a quick cowl um, that, you know, can be pulled up over your face as kind of just a reminder. Um, it's a quick project. And I wanted to play with this idea I had of working two color brioche um, using the one color um, as a single strand of, of a yarn and then using the second color as that same yarn held double with mohair. So this is what I have so far. So I started at the bottom. This is a DK weight yarn from Little Skein and the Big Wool. 
This was uh, supposed to be her Rhinebeck colorway, and then she ended up not, or not Rhinebeck, but uh, Indian Tangled. She ended up not vending there, um, but she still released it online. So it's called Autumn Light, as I recall, and this is her DK base. So I started here from a tubular cast on, twisted rib, and then I started this two color brioche. Uh, so you can see, hopefully it's gonna focus on this side, the knit columns are just the DK. And then the pearls are the DK held double with the moat. Well, in this case, it's not mohair. It could be, but I am using this. This is um, Chelsea Lux, Lux, I don't know, um, Dream, which is a uh, baby cereal packet and silk. And the colorway is called Rose Gold. Uh, somebody said it looked like cotton candy, and that's absolutely perfect. So I picked this up at um, the Knot House um, pop-up, the indie pop-up last year at Maryland Chico Wool Time. It's been marinating in my stash since then. Um, but you could also use a lace weight mower. So yeah, you can see the knit columns are just the DK and the pearls have the mohair. So on this side, it kind of looks like um, the, the knit columns are standing out on sort of a cloudy background. And then on the opposite side, you can see knit columns looking all fuzzy and the background being more solid. So I just wanted to play with that idea. Um, so far, again, this is just, you know, it starts from um, this little bit of twisted rib, then it goes into the brioche. I'm not sure how, I'm not sure where I'm gonna go from here. I mean, I, the main body of the gal, um, you know, I want to be this brioche. I wanna do something sort of on the top half. What I'm thinking about is um, maybe a, a long hem of just the DK weight um, in a ribbing and then picking up inside the ribbing and knitting sort of a layer of just the lace weight uh, and then attaching them at the top so that either way that you're wearing it, you can either pull that up over your face or you can fold it down. Um, and regardless of which side is showing, you're gonna have something that looks nice, or you're gonna have some ribbing, or you're gonna have this little layer of lace weight. So again, I, this just like jumped on my needles on uh, Sunday night, and today is Tuesday. I don't, time has lost all meaning. I, I have no idea. Um, so I'm making steady progress on it. Um, if you're not familiar with Two Color Brioche, it is a little fiddly. Um, to get used to, but once you get used to it, you, you develop the same muscle memory that you do with any other kind of knitting, so it's just kind of like knitting, knitting ribbing with an extra step. Um, so, a mindless project, and I think I'm going to try to get that going for a quick release in April. Uh, we, we shall see. Uh, again, that's just going to be a, a quick, simple project. Um, you know, when you need something that's just maybe a little treat for yourself, um, that's not too involved and easy to memorize. So we'll see. That is everything I have been working on. I have one more magazine sample and design that I need to really get moving on, but I just been procrastinating. It's not due until the end of April. Um, so I do have time, although it is kind of a big project. I do need to get started. I guess I'm just feeling not as inspired by it as I once was, um, but I do need to get started on that. Uh, and otherwise, that is pretty much all of the designs I have been working on for the last few weeks. So when uh, 2020 started, which feels like a million years ago, <laughs> um, I set up some goals for myself for the year and one of those was to um, have a design published in Pom Pom Magazine, or Pom Pom Quarterly, um, which if you're not familiar with, is sort of an independent 
um, knitting magazine that has become very popular. Um, and you really are seeing some very talented designers in there. Um, I mean, you can see it's kind of rather than like a magazine, it's like a little kind of like a little book. Um, it's very um, you know, sort of these hand drawn schematics and um, <sighs> moody photographs and articles and you know, it's very, uh, it's a little, it's a little upscale, I guess, is where I'm going with this. Um, you know, just uh, a little bit different than your day-to-day -day knitting magazine. So I set a goal of getting a design published in Pom Pom Magazine. So they recently put out a call for submissions for their winter issue, and it is being guest edited by Stephen West. And he is working in collaboration with um, Amy, I don't know her last name, from La Bien Amy, uh, which is a yarn company. So if you're familiar with Stephen West, it is like bold colors, textures. So I really wanted to submit something. Um, I don't want to be entirely outside my wheelhouse, you know, bright colors and crazy bold geometric that's not really my thing but I'm just trying to figure out sort of a way to um maybe balance the two so I sketched out a design the other day and I think I'm going to move forward and submit um these are not shoulder pads it's just that every time I try to draw a saddle shoulder sweater it, <laughs> it looks like shoulder pads they're not shoulder pads uh, they're saddles for a saddle shoulder sweater so what I'm kind of doing here with this is um, saddles and a rolled collar in uh, a mohair lace weight. Then, you know, body of the sweater, relatively plain in it's winter, so I'm going to say maybe a DK weight. Then use again the mohair for a kind of cinched ribbed waist. And then finish out the body with, again, this idea of combining the mohair and the main yarn in a two-color brioche with the sleeves being marled, holding both colors together or both yarns together. So that's sort of the concept. Um, I still need to swatch uh, and write up the proposal. We'll see. Um, that's kind of the idea I have. I missed the chance to submit for the fall issue. I'm not sure what happened. I don't know if I just, that the theme wasn't working for me or whatever. I know I didn't submit for the fall issue. Um, this would be published, I'm trying to remember. I definitely read on their thing. It would be published, even though it's for next winter, it would be published this year, so. Fingers crossed, that is one of my goals for the year, is to get a design published in Pom Pom. Um, so there you have a little peek inside my sketchbook. Hopefully that will come true. Okay, I have a new segment for you uh, in this episode. Uh, UFO invasion. Um, so uh, in this segment, I am going to dig out some of my long ignored unfinished objects and show them off um and you know feel free to leave a comment let me know if you think i should actually finish them or if it's time to time to uh cut bait and unravel so in the last episode i showed you a swatch that i had knit with some so i still have it here with some leftover yarn that wasn't really leftover that i had sort of pillaged from, uh, no, I don't know. I don't know where it is. I lose everything. Um, that I had pillaged from a different project, uh, an unfinished object. So I thought I would actually show you that today. So this is the progress I had made on the mesmeric cardigan. Um, 
This is a saddle shoulder color work cardigan. It was published by uh, Knit Scene, no, Knit Picks a few years ago. So it is worked in Knit Picks palette. Um, and I had done the saddles. And this is color work flat. This is not fun. Uh, and then I had started the back. So if you're not familiar with saddle shoulder construction, you knit these um, panels that go over the shoulders like this, uh, and then you pick up for the back um, and work down to the armhole. You pick up for the front and work down to the armhole, and then you can join it around. Um, alternately, you could um, put steaks in for the armholes. And in this case, I know there's a steak for the, for the front, and I think possibly eventually there are steaks for the armholes as well. But at this point, you're still working flat. So this is the back. And I love the colors for this. I had thought of this as sort of a Magnus opum. I mean, this is a big project. This um, at the time, I had never knit a saddle shoulder before. I had never done, um, you know, a full color work sweater. Um, I certainly hadn't done this color work knitting flat. Uh, I, had, I have very limited uh, experience doing steaks, although I've taken a couple of classes. Um, so this just had a lot of new techniques and things that uh, really made it a big project for me. And arguably I've done kind of the hardest, some of, almost the hardest parts. I've done all the flat color work knitting <laughs> um, and picking up. And this has short rows done in color work, which is a real pain in the butt. Um, and then, you know, it just, this is a, a project that requires a lot of concentration and focus. And I have two kids and just, <laughs> a uh, limited amount of time and, and my knitting time is mostly spent on my own designs. Um, you know, I mean, you gotta be reading from a chart and, you know, working out what your size is and making sure you're not following the wrong, the chart instructions for the wrong size and then doing these short rows and, and then I still have the front, you know, the front upper part all the way down to the armholes. And then, you know, once it got worked in the round, that would be much easier, <laughs> but it's just a lot of work getting there. So this has been on hold for several years. Um, I'm also, I mean, I love these colors, these, the, the autumn sort of tones in here, but I'm not entirely certain I would wear this very much. <laughs> um, it is, I mean, it's really, really beautiful um but i just don't know uh i would wear something kind of so bold and geometric and so ufo invasion <laughs> uh that is one of my long-suffering unfinished objects i would love to hear your comments i don't know uh i just don't know am i ever gonna finish this You never know, I guess. So next time I'll share another one because I've got a whole lot of these. All right, news and notes in this episode. I do have a couple of things to tell you about. The first is that I recently uploaded a new uh, Learn to Knit series uh, here on my YouTube channel. So um, obviously most people watching this probably already knit. Um, but you know, you might crochet or maybe you just like hearing people talk about knitting. That would be weird, but whatever. To each his own. Um, but you might know somebody who would like to learn to knit um, and you could share. So this is a new series of short tutorials. Most of them are about 10 minutes. Uh, the longest one is about 20. Um, it's five tutorials plus a video on sort of an introduction and the materials you'll need and you can learn to knit from the comfort of your own home, uh, which is really important during this period of uh, social isolation. So um, what we go over is the cast on, 
knit stitch, purl stitch, binding off, and then how to read a knitting pattern and where to find knitting patterns, um, which I know for those of us who do knit sounds crazy, but uh, <laughs> if you're a new knitter, you may not actually know about where knitting patterns can be found. Um, so it is uh, obviously a free series of tutorials. There is a, a dedicated playlist to it. So you could, if you know somebody who would like to learn to knit, just share a link to the playlist. They'll have all the videos right there. They won't have to go searching for them. Um, each one is you know, clearly labeled so you can go in order. Um, and hopefully, you know, during this time, we can make some new knitters. Um, I know in addition to obviously concerns about kids schooling and health and things like that, a lot of us are concerned about uh, the economy and our small businesses. I certainly am. Um, and the best way to ensure that our community stays uh, sort of vibrant is by introducing new people to it. So uh, when you make new knitters, they can join our community, hopefully support the small businesses within our community. Um, it's a win-win for everybody. They get a new hobby that will keep them busy while we're all stuck inside and hopefully it will stick and they will uh, keep doing that knitting after whenever this uh, isolation is done. Um, so if you know somebody who might be interested in learning how to knit, I hope you will share that with them. Uh, another piece of news, because this, you know, again, uh, has been a very trying time for a lot of us. Um, we're trying to find a balance, I think, between, you know, doing nice things for other people, um, but also trying to keep our small businesses afloat in what is looking increasingly like a recession. Um, so I have seen, um, you know, yarn companies maybe giving away patterns. That's great. Um, if your primary product is yarn, then you can kind of afford to give away patterns as a bonus. Um, but if you're like me and your primary product is patterns, um, if I just give them away, then I don't have a business. So, um, However, we do want to, you know, put, put a smile on your face, uh, keep your, your pattern library um, big and healthy during this time where we're probably all doing a little bit more knitting. So all of the patterns in my Ravelry shop, including the eBooks are 25% off through the end of March and you don't need a coupon code or anything. Um, so there is, you know, a link down below and in the show notes um, to my shop. Just add them to your cart, automatic 25% off. Um, so you get a little bit of a discount uh, and I get to keep making knitting patterns for uh, another day at least. Uh, and then the last bit of news I have is some good news. Uh, and that is that I recently hit 500 subscribers here on YouTube. Um, I know for many YouTubers, that is a pretty small number, but uh, for me, it's one I've been working towards slowly, um, and we finally did it, yay. So uh, in honor of that, we have a giveaway. So um, all you have to do is be a subscriber. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding, I have no way of checking that. <laughs> it just tells me how many I have, not who they are. Um, but if you are watching uh, this episode of the podcast, uh, leave a comment down below about anything. Just leave a comment and you'll be entered to win. The winner will be announced in the next episode of the podcast, which will be sometime in early April. I don't, so I don't have an exact uh, date that the contest will end. So as long as a new episode hasn't been uploaded, you're good to go. Uh, so what you're going to get is this beautiful skein of Neighborhood Fiber Company Studio Sock. This is the Parkland colorway um, that she dyed uh, to raise funds for the Parkland community after um, the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas several years ago. Um, so I, at the time, got two of these uh, and I used one for her tuck sound. And so I got an extra one to do for giveaway and here we go. So this is a very unique uh, colorway. And then this adorable little llama notions pouch. 
Isn't that so cute? I love it. So again, all you have to do, leave a comment down below, preferably saying something nice about um, my podcast. And also, you know, I can't, again, I can't check if you're a subscriber, but that'll be a really good thing to do. So we can, uh, we pass 500 and we can start working toward 1000. So 500 subscriber giveaway. All you gotta do is leave a comment and I'll announce the winner in the next episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 17 of the Eel and Stitch podcast. Uh, links to everything that I've talked about can be found in the show notes at mediaperuana.com slash Elo and Stitch. Uh, special thank you to my Patreon patrons whose support helps keep the podcast up and running. Uh, if you would like to learn more about supporting Media Peruana Designs and the Elo and Stitch podcast and learning about the bonuses and perks and freebies that you can get by doing that, you can find more information at patreon.com slash Media Peruana. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, all things that help uh, boost the reach of the podcast so we can get some new viewers. Um, and if you are looking for me on social media, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Media Peruana, and I will see you next time. Okay, what do we have to put in last? Cranberries. Cranberries. All right, what do we need before the cranberries? Uh, uh, that? Yeah, the cornbread that? mix. That's important. Time has lost all meaning, and we just drink wine whenever we feel like now. Now Simon says, jump around the coffee table. Hop, 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 like a bunny. <laughs> Simon says, stop. <laughs>